Hey everybody, the batteries are in. Let's get right to it. Everybody, hey, I got batteries. So um, I'm not even changing out of my work clothes. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, open it up, see what it looks like. Here we have it. So I do not know enough about these yet. So I um, have to do some uh, a little bit more research. Let me at least get one of them out so you can kind of see dimensions and they are all pretty heavy though. All right, I got one out. So each one of these is about the size of a shoe box. So it's, it's about 14 by six by eight and yeah, I'll, I'll get into uh, get into these. Um, I need I've got a bag. I shouldn't say a bag. A box of uh, thermistors that go to the BMS, the battery management system, and I got to tie all those on to the batteries. And like I said, I'll have to do some more research to figure that out. But now that I got these battery boxes or the batteries, um, I can figure out where to best mount them in the car. So I definitely want to put some up front weight distribution um, in these kind of side rails those are all empty so again that might be a good spot for them and then again behind the well in between the seats and the Tesla motor there's quite a bit of space in there as well now that I have my batteries um, I'm trying to figure out where to put them all so right here the motor there's actually quite a big space kind of in front of the motor um, so again, that'd be a good place. Um, you know, tons of room. The, I guess my only hesitation is it just puts a lot of the weight all the way to the back. Um, again, it's in front of the rear wheels, which is good, but, um, so anyways, looking at some other options, um, I've looked at, again, um, there's some space in here. Um, again, maybe, it's just not quite as, ex like, if you wanted to get at them, so the accessibility is just not as easy because there, there will be like a, a wheel well here, but uh, potentially could maybe put two or four batteries. Again, if you really wanted to shove them back there, you could put more, but uh, again, so that, that's another spot. Again, you can do both sides on the front. Um, so again, right now I just kind of have some hoses and things that I need to uh, get all situated. But again, hoses can be flexed around things. So again, up here I could probably put uh, four, I'm thinking. I don't know. I'm trying to imagine putting more than that. But I think that's about all you can do. So um, with all the batteries I have, I'm just trying to figure out where to put them all. All right, so... This is the front. Um, it looks like we're only going to be able to get three. So we're just over center, so we'll get one more. And that's okay, because we still need to mount the pump. Again, my thought was back there. Again, the coolant lines are more flexible, so I can go put it wherever, but my thought initially was back there. So um, the other thing is, again, this is kind of pretty close to the back. I could push it another inch or two. Um, but again, this radiator also wants to be back. So we'll see what we can do to bring it forward, get enough room. Um, and yeah, we'll look at uh, doing a battery box for the front here for three batteries. All right, so on the sides, um, yeah, as you can imagine, it's just not quite set up. Um, I could, I don't know if you can see that, but um, so I got one, so I got one battery back there. I could probably put a second one. They're just not real accessible. So I may just put one, I may put zero, I may put two. So we'll see um, on the, on the back here, we'll see kind of 
how many batteries fit and what makes sense. All right, one other spot that I could put some batteries is up here in the passenger footwell. Um, the car, apparently, if you get the gas version, the gas tank kind of goes here. So they've actually got a, um, a fiberglass piece that kind of is the footwell and it's got space there for gas. Um, so I could utilize that and I, I think I could price stack three batteries there as well. So um, I'll keep thinking and let you know. All right, so I got the, uh, this is the panels of fuel tank version cover. So again, um, I'm sitting down and I really can't extend my legs. So I don't know that putting batteries up there is going to be the best idea. Um, I'm six feet tall, so maybe no, I still think I'll probably just leave it how it was. But it was worth uh, worth a try. Again, there's the space that could be. So again, it's kind of battery size. It's just kind of makes makes passenger footwell just a little little on the short side. All right, so. Um, back by the Tesla, this is kind of what I've got for measurement. So it's kind of about 13 deep from, from the kind of back firewall to about the motor. Um, again, if I wanted to, I could go over the motor, but this is just kind of that rectangular area. And so 24 high, um, it actually kind of probably narrows a little bit down here. So if I wanted to go all the way to the bottom, it's probably more like 30 or something. But in general, um, that's kind of the space I've got. I think these are the configurations I can go with. Um, yeah. So it seems like eight would be a good number, just kind of number wise for the battery, anyways, for the space available. So again, it's about six and a quarter is the short side, and eight and a quarter is the other kind of short side, and then about 15 high. So I get 12 and a half. 15 high and then um, about 33. I think that's what I prefer. Um, it's got the aluminum and I, again, I could have them all on that side and all on that side. So I kind of like that. The other way I could do it is like this. Um, anyways, that's kind of what I'm looking at. All right, here we are back at CAD. Um, so again, I, I had a couple comments and I ran through some scenarios again. I'm, I'm the car, the frame was originally built to kind of uh, essentially hang or suspend the uh, motor so coming from on top. When I was uh, modeling the frame, I had it from underneath. It just, I don't know, it seemed like it should be underneath, but uh, looking at how everything supported, um, I kind of did all the uh, analysis again on a, on a top supported version. And I liked it better. Uh, it, it allows for better access, uh, you know, so if you need to drop the motor, so basically this is what I've come up with. All right, so here it is loaded. Um, so basically I'm building off the existing structure, um, coming to the back here and creating some mount points uh, for the motor, as well as kind of a rear crash bar. And again, it, it, it just turned out a little bit better. Um, again, I think it'll be easy to assemble, easy to weld and be strong and the, the analyses support that. So. Um, the other thing I wanted to show is this is the uh, essentially the, the rear of the car, the shell. Um, so the reason to show you this is this is kind of the Tesla wheel and um, you can see there's like no gap with the um, wheel well. So essentially the kit car is made to go with a much smaller wheel. Um, also the offset so essentially how far it is off um, so again we can get some wheels with different offsets but what I'd be looking at is kind of like a an 18 inch rim with like a plus 90 offset so it's either that or I can widen the fenders or the other thing I can do is I'd have to get some uh, custom drive shafts and essentially custom suspension so right now I'm either looking at crazy offset or um, widening the wheel wells. So that's kind of what it looks like. So the next thing that we're looking at is batteries. So I'll go ahead and uh, hide this one again. 
And so I'm able to put three up front. Um, I can choose to put one or two along the sides, either side, but essentially the biggest open space is just huge, is right here. So what I'm thinking is I'll go ahead and put, I don't know, probably at least up to eight, kind of right here. Um, that's kind of the, the size it would be. Let's get this on. So that's kind of where they would go. I have to build a battery box around that. Um, it's in front of the motor, so again, the weight's more forward, but still very much back, you know, rear heavy. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my thought for the majority of the battery pack. Um, and the reason why I want to do this is I wanted to kind of see if I needed to weld some other structures to support all this weight. So I think that's what we're going to go with. And we'll start ordering some steel and have it, have it come in. All right, so I'm getting some steel ordered um, for the frame, but in the meantime, looking at putting the uh, this box together with all the components, trying to figure out layouts, doing some soldering. So that's kind of the next part. Um, focusing first on the essentially the high voltage uh, side, and then we'll go into the controllers. Okay, so I was going to do this uh, terminal like I've done so, with some of my battery terminals. And so I used the torch to kind of get it hot and just tried to feed in the solder. And I got, I ran out of my other solder and got some new solder and this solder is just crap. So it just tends not to run. Um, it just kind of, I don't know. So <clears throat> I may either look for new solder or I'll get a, like a hydraulic crimping tool. All right, so I'm trying to lay out all my uh, connections and uh, everything for the high voltage. So I've got two fuses here, kind of uh, one for each battery pack. I've got two packs that um, will be in parallel. And essentially those two will go into here, this, this side of the uh, positive contactor. Um, or sorry, this is not the positive contactor. This is a switch. Um, safety switch. So then it'll come here and then go to the positive contactor and then this will just go out. Um, this is the negative so just get negative in and then negative back out for the negative contactor. Pre-charge resistor will go here and this is all the uh, things from the charging so essentially from the charger it'll come in uh, this is the positive one so it'll go again to the positive side here. I've got a essentially a fuse in line. Uh, I think it's 600 volt 30 amp fuse. So at least what it's supposed to be. And anyway, so they all have one go to the positive, one go to the negative, and then essentially they'll go out over to the DC to DC converter. So that's kind of the high voltage side of things. I'm going to start to uh, Drilling holes, getting things in place. Um, you see, I already tried to tried to get one. Again, I got to get some different solder or hydraulic press or something. So we'll we got to do that. But I can drill some holes and get things in place. All right. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and crimp on the connectors. So I've got, uh, originally got this for sprinklers, but it works really well to kind of cut this thick wire. Um, gets a nice clean cut. And I can also use it just kind of halfway to, and then rotate it to get the uh, jacket off. So I'll go ahead and do that and show you the final result. All right, so I just thought I'd show you the, uh, again, it gets a really nice cut, and again, don't get any, um, I don't have any wires cut here, right on along the edge, so um, we'll go ahead and crimp this one. All right, well, there it is, uh, crimped on. So I'll go ahead and put some uh, heat shrink over that and 
go on to the next the next side here. All right, so I'll show you real quick with this one. Let me just double check here. All right. All right, that's my first cable. So I think it looks pretty decent. Um, the crimp seemed to work pretty good. And um, so this one will go from my safety switch, uh, which is there, to my positive contactor. So we'll see if we can uh, get it all tightened it or tightened down. Okay, so made a little progress on the uh, contactor box. Um, I think I'm just, well, I have, I can always go back, but I've decided to put the uh, big fuses in here as well, and also the safety switch. So that one will go there, that, so essentially one battery pack goes here, the other battery pack goes there. They essentially join here. Um, the switch can, will allow current flow and then it goes to the positive contactor and then it will go to the motor. Um, my thought is I'll put the negative contactor here. Again, negatives come in from the battery and then through the contactor and then out to the motor. Um, this is my pre-charge resistor. It basically goes in line here with red, red cable, red line for positive contactor. And it also needs a relay but I think I'll just put that in the fuse relay box. So um, that's where, where we're to. And I don't think I can really do any more of the big orange cable until I kind of have placement of my batteries. So I'll probably try and fix all this, um, even put probably the pre-charge resistor in there as well. And then that'll be it for now. All right, everybody, that does it for this week. See you next week.